It's all about the apps. Everything that we do in cloud, on-prem, everything comes down to the applications. And in this episode of the AZ140 Study Guide, we're gonna talk about all things apps so that you can get your WBD certification. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. You can take the traditional approach and install your apps inside your images, and we covered how to do that in a previous video, or you can take your systems that are already built and deploy applications to them. But in WVD, we have some additional options like FS Logics App Masking. This allows you to install all of your applications into your image and then control what applications your individual users are allowed to see. We have the additional option of being able to use MSIX App Attach, which is now generally available. That means just like our profiles, we can keep our applications separate from our operating system so we can update and manage and maintain all of them independently. And that gives us a lot of flexibility. Now I have done two other videos on MSIX App Attach already. So if you're unfamiliar with MSIX App Attach, I'd suggest you go check those videos out. I'll just give you a quick overview here and some of the things to watch out for in each step of the process so that you can be successful. And there's a seven step process to follow for MSIX App Attach. First, we package, then test, expand, copy, grant, mount, and assign. In packaging, the thing to be aware of most of all is the kind of certificate you're using. This should be from your own certificate authority or an online CA. This cert would be stored on your systems where they're always stored, no change there. But if you're using a self-signed certificate that's not publicly trusted, you need to watch out for a few things. First, you're going to have to install this certificate on all of your session hosts. This can be done manually with a script or even through a group policy. And when you install it to your systems, it's gonna to have to go on the local machine into the Trusted People Certificate Store. For the testing step, I'm gonna come back to that after we finish the overview and I'll show you how I do mine. So the next thing on our list is to expand. This is where we take our MSIX package and a tool called the MSIX Manager and expand those files into a disk image. This image can be a .vhd or .vhdx file, although generally you wouldn't use vhdx, because all of the dynamic and scaling capabilities of vhdx really aren't necessary for app attach. Or you could use the new simfs format, and that would be a .sim file. And the two questions I usually get here are, one, how big should my disk image be? And two, what is this simfs thing and why should I use it over vhd? For your image size, the best practice is a one to three ratio. And that means if your MSIX file is 100 megs in size, your disk image should be 300 megs. As for SIMFS, that's a file-based image format, which is really a collection of a bunch of flat files that contain data and metadata. The reason for using them over VHDs is they attach and detach much faster from the host system and use less CPU and RAM. And having more resources available means you can either stack more apps on the same box or get more users. The copy section is pretty straightforward. We need to take our new disk image and bring it up to our file share. Now on the left, you can see I've got a .vhd file and you're very familiar with those already. And on the right, we have our .sim file. And notice that there are several different files here. You will need all of them, not just the .sim itself. So whichever one you're using, copy all of the files up to your Azure file share where you're going to be hosting your MSIX app attach from. And now we need to grant the permissions. As of this recording, Azure Files has two different sides to its permissions you need to think about, the Azure side and the Windows NTFS side. And you'll need to grant permissions on both sides to either the same group or host computer object in order for this to work. As for what permissions you grant, we need to follow the least privileged security model. And that means in your Azure files, you would grant the permission of storage file data share SMB reader. And then the permissions on the Windows NTFS side would be modify. 
read because we only need to see what's going on on our file share, and then modify because we need to mount the image onto our session hosts. Speaking of mounting, we go then to the Azure portal and open up our host pool and mount our MSIX disk image. We need to have at least one session host in this host pool and it needs to be available. Okay, if it's not available and healthy, the rest of this won't work. So now the package will be mounted onto the host, but it may not happen right away. The polling time for the WVD agent is every five minutes. So depending on where you are in that cycle, you may have to wait a little bit, so just be patient. If you're using a .vhd file in the session host, you can go to the disk manager and you should see it mounted on the system. But if you're using SIMFS, you will not see it in the disk manager, okay? Disk manager is a very old tool and doesn't understand SIM yet, so we need to use a command line tool in order to see the SIM images mounted. So I've opened up an admin command prompt and the command here is mount vol and that'll show you every disk that is mounted on the system, including your SIMFS files. And then we come to our last step where we're going to assign our MSIX application to our app group and then give our permission to our users. Now, when it comes to assigning your packages, we need to know what experiences we want to give our end users. If it's a remote app experience, then we need a remote application group like our users in the UK. But if it's a desktop experience like our users in the US and Japan need, then we'll need a desktop application group. So that's the seven step overview process. Let's circle back and talk about testing because this is a critical step. So I copied over the MSIX package for Notepad++ onto my test virtual machine. And as you can see from the apps and features list, Notepad++ is not installed on our virtual machine. So let's double click and do an install. Whoops, we've got a problem. This package is not trusted and it won't let us do an installation. So this is a common problem in MSIX app attached. So let's take a look. Go ahead and click on start and type cert. And the first item that comes up as our best match is manage computer certificates. And that's the one we want. There are also user certificates on a system, but that doesn't apply here. So go ahead and click on that first link. Now where exactly your certificate needs to go depends, like I said before, on the kind of cert. If it's from your local CA or an online authority, then they should go in your trusted publishers. But in my case, I'm using a self-signed certificate, so we need to check in trusted people. Yep, there's the problem. The store is empty. But no worries, we can fix this in a quick second. If you right-click on your MSIX package and go to Properties, and then at the top go to Digital Signatures, you'll see the certificate that's embedded in the package. It got there through our packaging process, so just click on that certificate, and then click the Details button. And now you see here we have the View Certificates button. Go ahead and click that. And now we have the normal certificate install experience. Click Install Certificate. Be sure that you select Local Machine because user certificates aren't going to help us here. And click Next. Choose the second option to place your cert in a specific store and click Browse. Scroll down till you find Trusted People. Select it and click OK. Click Next. And then click Finish. With your certificate installed, you can just close these other windows. And now go ahead and double click your package. And there you go, we are now trusted. So go ahead and hit install. So the install here will just take a few seconds because Notepad++ installs quickly. And there you go, Notepad++ installed and works. So our package is good to go. You can proceed now with the rest of the seven steps by expanding into your disk image of choice, copying, granting, etc., etc. If you have any more questions on MSIX packaging or app attach at all, give me them in comments down below. For now, let's move on and talk about FS Logics app masking. This is not part of the same installation that you've already done for your FSLogix profiles. There's a separate installer in that same zip package that you already downloaded called the FSLogix app rule editor. So you just want to double click on that and install it on your system and then open the rule editor. And the way that this works is we create a new rule set and in there we can choose from a list of applications that are already on the system. 
And once you've selected what you want here, then click the scan button at the bottom. This will discover all of the different files and registry settings for your application. And when you're done with that and you hit save, you'll end up with two files, a .fxa, which is where all the assignments are, and a .fxr, which is the rules file itself. And once you're finished with setting up your rules the way that you want, you can assign that rule to a user or group. Now, how you do this depends on how you think about these things. Do you approach things with the default of everyone's allowed to view this app or everyone is denied and you have to grant them the allowed permission? And there isn't necessarily a benefit to doing that either way. It's just how you want to manage. So that's a single machine. How do we scale app masking? Well, the best way is usually through group policy. So you need to put all of your rules files into a central location and then you have a group policy which will copy those files down to the right location on your target session host. And that way your rules are applied on all of your systems appropriately and all of the users get the experience you want them to have. Speaking of experiences, the thing that governs all of these experiences in Windows Virtual Desktop are the application groups. So what exactly is an app group and what's its relationship to the other WVD resources like the host pools, workspaces, and session hosts? An app group is a local grouping of applications that are installed on a session host that lives in a host pool. And an app group can be one of two types, remote app groups. This is where you have access to applications directly or desktop app groups where you get the full desktop experience. As of this recording, no matter which kind of host pool you're using, personal or pooled, you can only have one desktop application group per host pool. But just to make things a little more interesting for you, desktop app groups support adding MSIX app attach as an application. When you add the MSIX app attach files to your desktop app group, the application will be presented inside the desktop experience. So that's desktop app groups. Then we have the remote app groups. This is for pooled host pools only, but pooled host pools also can have desktop app groups, which means you can combine the two. Now, before you go crazy with this, remember back to video number three in the AZ140 series where we talked about host pools, and said that host pools are a collection of identical session hosts that serve the same kind of user workloads. So with that best practice in mind, I would recommend separating your desktops and remote apps into separate host pools so that each one of them can be focused on serving that particular kind of user. But hey, it's your host pool. So we can publish applications to our desktop and remote app groups. What else can we do with an app group? Well, this is where we assign users to access those applications. So when you click on your app groups over on the left, you would click on assignments at the top, go ahead and hit add. And then from the picker, just like always, you select your user or group and you're done. They now have access to what's in that app group. Just keep in mind that you're publishing access to the app group and any applications that are in it, which brings up a good question. Should you have one app per app group or multiple apps per app group? And I know that this is going to shock all of you when I say it depends. The best practice is to have no more than 50 applications in a remote application group. And there is a limitation as of this recording of 200 app groups per Azure Active Directory tenant. That's your desktop and remote app groups combined. So count up your apps and desktops and do the math and see how it works out for you as to which way you want to manage things. One last thing that we need to talk about with app groups are workspaces. Now a workspace is a logical grouping of app groups. Each app group must be associated with a workspace for the users who've been allowed to use that app group can see their published applications. So let's take a quick step back and look at the total picture. We have our host pools, and as members of the host pools, we have session hosts. That's where the app is installed and where the workload would actually run. The app group presents the applications or remote desktops of the session host through the workspace to the end user. 
So it's the workspace that the client actually talks to and shows all of the stuff that the app group has presented that lived on the session host through the host pool. Make sense? So that's WBD in a nutshell and your app groups in particular. As usual, leave your comments and questions and suggestions for new video topics down below. And if this has been a help to you, go ahead and click that like button and consider subscribing to the Azure Academy so you can master the cloud. And you've made it this far in our AZ140 series and we're almost done. So you can click through to the next video in the series or switch it up with the latest video up here. Thanks for joining me for this episode and we'll catch you in the next one. Happy learning.